Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I'm here today even though it's August with my July um, Distachify makes and also my Fabricol that I've got sitting over here. So I've actually made five separate pieces from my Distachify fabrics um, that I bought how does this work? Yeah, I bought, that was my haul in June, and so I made them in July. I meant to have this video up at the end of the month of July, but obviously, you know, life just happened and just scheduling, so. <laughs> so anyway, I had two different fabrics, got five different things out of them, and I'm going to talk you through those really quickly, and then um, I will show you the four pieces that I picked up in July that I'm going to be making up in August, and hopefully showing you at the end of August. And it's it's going to be some pretty major sewing, <laughs> but I'm very excited. I'm looking at the color palette over here. It's going to be really cool. Okay, um, let's dig in. So let's talk a little bit. If you're new to the channel, Distashify is a um, online website that allows you to sell. Uh oh, so Distashify is an online um, store, a place where you can, kind of like an eBay kind of, where you can sell um, fabric, um, patterns, notions, yarn, really anything crafting related um, yourself. So you have like your own little shop and it's also a great way to kind of thrift fabrics, things that people are getting rid of in their stashes. I have found some really cool pieces. I highly encourage you to go look at, I have a Distashify playlist on my um, channel under the, the playlists and go have a look because I have picked up some of the coolest pieces of fabric uh, from Distashify, you know, things that people didn't think they'd get made up or that weren't, ended up not being in their color palette. That's been a big one here recently. Um, yes, but this month, and I found actually a couple of really cool pieces for um, this coming month, but last month um, it really was more uh, some basics. So I immediately was drawn into this yellow and white stripe cotton jersey. Uh, it's a cotton spandex jersey. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Goodness gracious. Um, so yeah, you can get some really good basics. I am, I, I'm actually thinking in September of doing a whole month where everything kind of revolves around um, sewing economically. So we're going to be doing, um, we're going to actually be doing a lot with, I'm going to be doing a lot with Distashify, picking some fabrics to go with some patterns and that sort of thing, kind of getting your creative juices flowing and helping you to learn to use the site um, the way that I have been using it. I'm also going to be doing a video on how to sell things on Distashify. I'm going to be selling stuff my, myself. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking you through the whole process the same way that I'm going to be going through it the first time, um, just to kind of help you if you're having issues with that. Um, I want to do some pattern hacking, you know, how to use your patterns to the, um, to the to the most you know how to get the most out of your patterns obviously that saves money in the long run we're going to do some stuff on organizing your sewing room just how that can help um you know the flow and make sure that you're not buying things that you already have or that you don't need i find being organized is very very good in that um i actually have a video coming up though and this is kind of what got my juices flowing on this that's going to be coming i think next tuesday um on how I shop for fabric and the best way shopping for fabric with a plan so that you can shop sales with a plan. Um, I recently hit up the Minerva sale and we're just going to be talking a lot about that. That's going to be next Tuesday, but that kind of got the juices flowing on just doing a whole month in September on um, economical sewing and how we can be more economical in our hobby and still get all of the great benefits without breaking the bank. So that is my plan for September. If that sounds good, let me know down below, but I, I have a whole bunch of different video ideas that can go along with that theme in September. And I think the Sundays in September are going to be pattern hacking tutorials um, as opposed to like a sew along or whatever, or even like a sewing tutorial. They're going to be pattern hacking tutorials. There may be some sewing in there, but the, yeah, the Sundays in September, um, it's also National Sewing Month in September, so I thought that would be a great way to kind of honor the hobby and also a way that we can do it, especially in the current economic um, situation that everyone is in right now. It's just a very bizarre post-COVID thing that we're all experiencing right now. So that is kind of what I've got going forward. But to Stashify, go have a look. Obviously, none of these fabrics are available again anymore. Um, there's a few pieces are there on there that you can buy um, that's yardage where you can buy just a certain amount of yardage. Most of the stuff on there though is by the piece. So you kind of just got to, you see something you like, buy it quick because it'll go away. Um, but anyway, that is, it's just a, really fun to go through and it's a rabbit hole and you can be down it forever and ever. Okay, also um, over the weekend I'm 
pretty sure I broke my toe. I kicked a chair really hard and I like ripped my pinky toe off my, my foot pretty much. Um, but I've got a lot of bruising and a lot of pain going on. I mean, there's nothing you can do for a broken toe. So if I'm hobbling and standing weird, that is why. I have a lot of pain in my left foot. Okay, <laughs> it's been quite the weekend. All right, let's talk about these pieces that I made with my first fabric. Again, this is a cotton spandex jersey from, um, it actually came from Joann's, I believe. I, I got it from Stashify, but it had Joann's on the selvage, which, uh, to be honest, is not my favorite. It's not my favorite jersey. Um, I don't think the recovery on it is great. Um, it can, it's kind of heavy. It gets out of shape easily because of the weight of it. Um, but anyway, I just loved the stripe. Although, once I got it and was getting ready to cut out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a, I, I mean, obviously, I knew it was a printed on stripe when I bought it, and I tried to just buy knit in stripes, because that means that the stripes will be on the grain. Sometimes a printed on stripe can drive you nuts, but I honestly did not have issues with this. It seemed to be printed pretty straight, so I was able to cut things on the grain and also keep my stripes um, going across the body parallel. <laughs> Which doesn't always that doesn't always happen with uh, printed on stripes. So feeling very blessed in that. But I just love the yellow color with the white, and um, I kind of played around with doing a sundress and stuff with it. But then I just I you know I've used some of this Joann's knit before where it's kind of grown and um, you know doesn't hold its shape well. So I decided to go with sleepwear with this, and I'm actually really happy that I've decided to go this route. Because number one, I need pajamas. Um, I just I just need a couple more pieces, and number two this pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm being sneaky. This is me being sneaky right now. So this is the Love Notions Luna Loungewear pattern, which has been out for quite some time. However, if you're interested in purchasing the Luna, I think that I would maybe wait <laughs> a couple of days. <laughs> just, uh, I don't know, maybe just to think about it, see what happens. Um, yeah, because Love Notions is currently going through their entire catalog of patterns and redoing all of the older patterns and putting them on their new block. So, and her goal is to have all of the, all the new patterns obviously are on the new block, but all the older patterns, everything will be on the same block by the end of 2022 was the goal. And I think that they're gonna hit that. So there are a few more patterns that still need to get released in the new block. Anyway, so I made the Luna Loungewear pattern. <laughs> they tease things on Love Notions all the time, so I don't really feel bad about letting those few things leak, but um, yeah, and this one's been teased quite a bit. Anyway, the Luna Loungewear pattern comes with so many different variations. Um, it comes with a nightgown, it comes with a tank, a pair of shorts, and a pair of capris. Um, it also includes a shelf bra that you can put in um, if you wanted to wear the tank, you know, out and about, or, you know, whatever. I love the shelf bra op option for sleeping. I don't, I'm not, I need more of a bra off to be like out and about, my own personal opinion. But for sleeping, it is absolutely the best. So I made a Luna Loungewear nightgown, um, maybe last summer. It was in kind of a floral. Um, I wear it all the time. I have two nightgowns that I wear on rotation and that is one of them. I love that bra, um, the new bra that's on there or the, not new bra, but the, uh, oh my gosh, the built-in bra that is in there. Now, on the new block, <laughs> the um, uh, the old built-in bra was the same piece for the front and the back. Um, the new built-in bra is a different front to, to back, which makes much better sense, and you can get the full bust front. Um, I think you could get the full bust front, though, in the previous one, to be honest. Um, also, if you've already purchased Luna Loungewear and a new version comes out, that will just be, when that new version comes out, that will just be in your downloads. You just have to re-download the pattern. You don't have to rebuy it, just so you're, just so you're aware. So I had, I think, gosh, two and a half, maybe I had three yards of the, close to three yards of this, um, of this fabric, but I decided that I wanted to use it for pajamas. I wanted to make another nightgown. So glad that I did. This is so cute. I'll take this off so you can see the inside of it real quick. It's the same. Um, so I made the nightgown. I also made the tank because I wanted it to go with a pair of capri pants um, for the cooler months. So I sleep very hot and I don't like to sleep hot. I like to be 
very cold when I'm sleeping. So no matter the time of year, my husband's the same, which is lucky. Um, so we keep our, we drop our air conditioning at, at night in the summer, um, somewhat low. Uh, but then in the winter, we don't put the heat very high at all um, so that we can sleep very cold also at night. Um, but I wear sleeveless all the way through the winter, even when it's stupid cold here in Indiana, because I like having my arms bare. And if I get cold, I just pull more covers on. Um, so I very, I don't really like a sleeve on my arm when I'm sleeping. And that's kind of something that's been new since I've gotten into my forties, but we won't go too far into that. So I knew that I would, um, really enjoy a pair of cooler weather, um, pajamas that, um, I, I mean, I could just throw a robe over this, you know, if I'm wearing it around the house or that kind of thing and it's still cold. Because I um, have my robe. You guys have also seen that. It's kind of a burnt orange color. Um, it's the co composed robe from Love Notions. That's my warmer robe. It's in like a French terry. Love that thing. And um, I think it looks really good over this yellow too because this is all in my color palette. Um, also did, so I did a size medium in both of these with the full bust fronts. Um, I shortened both of these an inch at the waist, so I brought the waist up an inch because I did notice I needed that in the other one that I made. Um, it just where it got narrow for a waist was down lower on my body than it should be, and so then it like pulls weird across my gut, which no one needs that. But if I pull the waist up where it's supposed to be, um, everything fits much better because the skirt, the nightgown kind of has an A-line shape to it. So I pulled the waist up an inch on both of these and then I shortened the hem of this two inches. My previous one, I had just done one inch and always kind of wish I'd done an extra inch. So this one has been shortened a total of three inches, once at the waist, twice at the hem. This one has just been shortened the one inch at the waist for the um, top. Um, and again, I'll show you the insides in just a minute. And then I did the capri pants um, as well. I did the pockets. I included the pockets because I'm always looking for a place to pop my phone when I'm like walking in with my computer and my coffee to like sit down and do work or whatever. Um, I did not do a drawstring. I just did the elastic and um, made the size medium in this. I did scoop out the back crotch curve three eighths of an inch. It's very common for me, um, but that's it. I didn't even shorten the legs on these because I kind of wanted them um, almost ankle pant length. So I just left the length completely alone. But again, size medium on this as well. Love my two new sets. So let me show you the inside. The inside of the nightgown and the tank look just alike. So we will just take this off. Okay. So I actually, again, I'm not crazy with the recovery on um, the fashion fabric on this. So I went ahead and used some um, cotton spandex. This is the Minerva cotton spandex that I love for the shelf bra. And um, I know that this has great recovery and it'll be great. So you do get um, um, elastic that goes under here, an inch wide elastic that gets sewn in under the bust there. And that works out really, really great. Um, and I, again, I think this fabric's going to help things not to like sag too much because this will help keep everything nice and taut. Now for the, um, binding, sorry, I'm a floating body, no head. For the binding, I had this, I forgot about this. There is a place in Chicago called, uh, textile, uh, discount textile outlet or textile discount outlet. I can, I never say the name right. It's a warehouse. Um, it's amazing in Chicago. And when we were there, this would be pre COVID. Um, I was there with some of my sewing friends and I, we came across a whole bunch of fold over like elastic and my friend Cisa and I, um, she's my friend that I visited last weekend. Um, we bought so much. <laughs> anyway, this is a fold over elastic that has a Pico edge. Isn't that cool? I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. So it's got the Pico edge, but it's a fold over elastic. And I use fold over elastic instead of the binding pieces that are included in the pattern. And I ooh, did that with my um, last nightgown that I made as well. It worked really, really well. Um, Cause it's basically, you're putting it on the same way. Um, and there's instructions for how to do that in the pattern. But um, I just love the way it looks and it's a fun little um, addition. And I just think that's just so sweet and cute. So very pleased with how that turned out. Um, I just cut my elastic the same length as the pattern pieces were for the binding and it worked perfect. So, I mean, it's just so simple and cute and comfortable and that's gonna be great. So there is that um, and that's everything that I made for myself. Let me switch the mannequins over and I will show you the two pieces that I've made for my daughter. Okay, 
So with the second fabric I had um, that I grabbed, I used for my daughter. So she's gonna be going back to school here next week and um, she just wanted a couple of tops for her um, to wear, just like regular, you know, knit tops. So I have made her the cropped Concord with the long sleeves with the Carlisle uh, square neckline. So the Carlisle is one of the Cashmere at Club patterns and um, this is the square neckline. She loves this one. She's got another Carlisle that's got the Carlisle puff sleeves that she loves, but she just wanted straight sleeves for this one. So um, that's what we did for this one. She's very excited about it. And then the other one, um, oh, this is a cotton spandex jersey as well. A lighter weight one. Not super lightweight, but lighter weight. Um, I made the Adrian blouse. This is the um, Friday Pattern Company Adrian blouse. I've been wanting to make this forever, and I bought the pattern really for my daughter, but I've traced it out in my size as well. So um, the Adrian, because um, there's really not much to say. I made okay, I made her a size two with an EF cup for this top. That's it. There were zero alterations made to it. <laughs> this one I made her the extra small, but. The pattern has just one pattern piece for the front and the back. You cut it out twice. And there are instructions for how to do like um, a full bust adjustment, you know, if you needed to do one for the front. And um, it's actually one of the ways that I show on my three ways to do a full bust adjustment, um, a dartless full bust adjustment. But I did the way, I decided to do the way where um, you basically create a dart, but then you just stretch the back to fit that dart bulk instead of sewing the dart. Um, and I think that's worked out really, really well. This went together really quickly, and everyone told me that it would, and I was just very impressed with how quickly it went together. I have put a tag in the back because it's very hard to tell the front and the back from this shirt um, so that she'll be able to easily uh, figure out which way this goes on. She has an issue with that anyway. Um, it's also a shorter length. It's not cropped, but it is a shorter length, and I think it's going to just tuck into her stuff really, really well. Now I get questions all the time. When I am buying fabric, how do I know that I'm buying colors that um, are in my color palette? One of the ways, I mean, there's many different things I kind of look at with colors. Um, sometimes it's name and other things, but if you have your colors done and you come back as a color type that is more muted as opposed to clear. So for instance, the Color Guru, they're looking at if you are cool or warm, if you are muted or clear, and if you are light or dark. Yeah, I think those are like the main criteria for figuring out your color palette. And there may be something else in there. But anyway, <laughs> I am warm. My daughter is cool, so we're opposite there. I am clear colors. She is muted colors, so we're opposite there. We are both light. Um, so with the dark to light, we are both on the light end. I'm more medium, less as light as she is. Um, but yeah, we differ <laughs> like almost in all of them. Um, but if you are muted, and this can be any of the, you know, well, not any of the seasons. I don't think, I think it would be the summer seasons or the autumn seasons have muted colors, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, one of the things to look for if you are um, a color family that looks better in muted colors are things that say they are heathered or melange. Because both of those will have like a little bit of extra color in here and it gives whatever the color is more of a muted effect. Um, it makes it not as clear. So um, this is a, I think this was said heathered, um, like a smoky blue gray heathered. It's on her color card. It looks phenomenal on her. It's a great color. Um, so that is one thing you can look for if you are one of the muted colors. But there's not too much to say about these. They're just great staples. She's going to wear the heck out of them. Um, I'm sure they will. I mean, they're knit tops, so they're easy for her to throw on. She can wear them with shorts as the weather is still warm and then switch over to jeans and pants as the weather cools. Speaking of which, my daughter, <laughs> I'm, oh, I have two dresses left to make her, but other than that, I'm, I mean, I've been done with her summer capsule for a while now. I just need to track her down um, to actually try things on for you guys. I do have footage of her in the dress that I made her, that really pretty um, Vicky Sews dress that she made for that quinceanera she went to, and I will show you guys that in the vlog on Friday. You'll see that, her in that one. Um, but as far as the other stuff that I've made for her, I just have to, and I need to wrangle her in before school starts next week because then she's just going to be, it's going to be impossible. So hopefully this weekend, fingers crossed, I can get her just to try on everything that I've made for her and we'll do kind of a lookbook and that'll be a video here in August coming up as well. Okay, let's move these ladies out of the way and I'll show you what I grabbed. Okay. 
So like I mentioned, I got four fabrics. Let's just look at all, these all came together. Again, it was from all the same seller. Isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> just made me so happy looking at the stack. All right, so the first fabric that I grabbed, this is, I think it's three yards of a waxed cotton. I'm gonna be honest, I've not worked with waxed cotton before, so I'm very excited about this. I grabbed it though um, to make myself kind of a, I'm going back and forth, like an anorak type jacket. So I could definitely, oh yeah, it is very soft on one side. So it's almost like a, um, like a cotton canvas kind of, but then it's got a, like a brushed side, which makes it water repellent. So being waxed cotton, it will be very dur durable and water repellent. So I had a couple of options. At first I was thinking um, a Kelly Interact by Closet Core Patterns because I've made that and I've got um, a couple of them actually. But having an unlined one for a raincoat um, and not a waterproof coat necessarily. I think this would be more water resistant. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't want to like stand in a parade or something in the rain and it, that wouldn't be lovely. But something that, you know, if I'm out walking and it starts to rain, I'm not going to get drenched by the time I get home. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of looking for. So I was thinking of doing that possibly, or I was also looking at my wardrobes basics checklist. I will link up to that video if you're curious. You can sign up for the newsletter to get your own free checklist of this. Looking at the things that I still um, wanted for my wardrobe that I don't have right now, and one of which was a casual coat. Like, um, and it really was more of like my brown color, but you know, this rust kind of terracotta color I feel like can, it, it would be close enough that I, I would be fine with that. And um, I really have been wanting to make another Closet Core Sienna Maker Jacket, but the cropped one, that's so cute. So I have, like I'm throwing around some ideas here. So this may end up being that, or this ends up being the Kelly Anorak. Also, you won't pre-wash this because of the wax cotton. This will not get pre-washed. Or I also grabbed um, yard and a half, I think. I think this is a yard and a half of this beautiful Michael Kors cashmere coating. It's brushed. Is that not stunning? In this peach color, but I also grabbed, um, so again, I think I have a yard and a half of this. This Pendleton, I only have a one yard of this and it's narrow. It's only 44 inches wide, but this Pendleton flannel. So this is Pendleton wool, a wool flannel. It is gorgeous. And how beautiful are those two together? Of doing some kind of a mix of maybe the Sienna Maker jacket, the cropped one, with these two fabrics and lining it, figuring out a way to maybe line it. What do you guys think? Or do I do a different kind of coat with these? I really feel like these need to be together. Again, this is a cashmere. It would definitely need a lining. Um, and I feel like there was a video at some point or a blog post that Closet Core did on lining the Sienna Maker jacket. So I will definitely look into that. But um, I think both of these are gonna be jackets um, of some sort. But those are the two patterns that I'm playing around with for that. Oh my gosh, this cashmere just feels, it feels so lovely. And it does have an app, so everything will have to be, you know, the same, going the same direction. Um, but that could be a really cute casual coat even in the wool, lining it. Um, yeah, that could be really cute and kind of a, a showstopper. And these are all in my color palette. And then finally, I grabbed, this is a French Terry, and I feel like it has, it's a viscose French Terry, or maybe a cotton viscose blend. And I, there's only a yard of it. Um, th this was not very expensive at all. But it's this tie-dye. And I thought when I grabbed it that it was more gray, but then when it came, it is more my gray. So I literally have like one shade of gray on my color chart, which is like a really tan, I didn't bring it down here, but it's like a tan gray, like a grayish kind of gray beige, <laughs> a very warm gray that goes brown. And this is 100% my gray, not my daughter's. Because um, I was thinking of doing something for her and this, um, like a cropped something for her in this. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is, you know, I just made the Luna loungewear um, pants and I'm thinking that a pair of shorts might be really nice, I think. Because, I don't know, like with the tie-dyed, I mean, it's, it's in my color palette, so it'll go with the things in my closet already, but I don't necessarily put this next to my face and think, oh, that's amazing. I mean, do you? 
Sorry, my lights are kind of all wonky. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay. I don't know, what do you all think? Should this just be like lounge shorts? Or should I make like a slouchy, loungy, kind of cropped sweatshirt or something? Or a t-shirt, like a real loose, cause it's the, it's got, um, it's it got a lot of drape in it. It's a very lightweight French Terry. But I don't know, what do you all think? Do I need another pair of lounge shorts? I really love those Lunas that I've just made. So yeah, so I think I am gonna keep this myself. So everything's for me this month. Um, but yes, those are the fabrics that I picked up, four of them. So two jackets and either sweat, something loungewear, sweatshirt or lounge shorts. Let me know what you think down below. But there you have it, guys. Those are my July Destachify makes and then the um, fabric haul that I got from them as well. Okay. Uh, Friday is going to be part two of my rayon vlog. So I'm going to be making a few more pieces this week, taking you along for the ride on that, showing you the, um, I'll show you my daughter in her dress and all that kind of stuff. That'll be happening on Friday. And then um, Sunday, I'm not sure what the tutorial is going to be quite yet. Then the next Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a video on how I shop sales. So I'm going to be showing you what I got from Minerva, but also um, how I shop sales in order to actually save money and not spend things on, you know, just go into that, the sale frenzy. You know what I'm talking about when you're like, ah, oh, it's all, it's all on sale. I need it all. Um, how not to go into that mode and how to shop with a purpose so that you actually do save money in the long run, as opposed to, um, just having a ton of fabric that just is building up your stash that you then have to get rid of later. Okay. That's all I've got for today, guys. Um, hope you've enjoyed this one, and I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. I hope you get some sewing in this week. I'm very hopeful to get some sewing in this week as well. Um, have a lot of rayon plans, so that's very exciting. And I will see you guys again on Friday. Have a good one. Bye.